What's up guys, Mike here. Welcome back to Game Dev with AI, the place, my journey where we're developing our indie real-time strategy game called Nuke Them All without any programming skills, just using the tools of AI and the engine called Construct3, which is a great engine for the visual programming. It's been more than three months since my last video and I did immense progress on my game. I'm almost ready to release the demo, so probably when you're watching this video, the demo is already released, so head on to Steam, search Nuke Them All, and here you can learn everything about our upcoming game, check the trailer, the screenshots, and I will really appreciate if you click Add to your wishlist. You don't have to buy anything, but just by adding it to your wishlist, you are telling Steam that the game is getting popular and this will really help me out. So without further ado, let's dive straight on how we can add the rain, water, lava and snow to our game. Whew. Let's start with the rain. I'll get more into detail about adding rain and the rest are pretty similar. So as a starting point, as always, I use my favorite channel called Game Design with Riley. It's a great guy. I've been in communication with him personally as well, very helpful. He is making his own engine for Construct for 3D. So check out his channel. You'll find a lot of very helpful videos about Construct 3. And this video that he made a year ago is how to add a simple rain and thunder. He describes everything in detail here. And of course, you can Play, see how it works. Which I could also and and um, most important, you can download the source here. But we use it as a starting point. But of course, for our game, I need to, to make more complex rain. So as a starting point, this is great to understand what you need to do, but then you have to redo everything to make it work in your game. So I'll focus more on what I actually did here instead of just redoing the same. So rain, here we go. First, we need to create two sprites. The first one will be raindrop, which looks like this. It's a very small sprite. You can see it's like, what, 10 pixels, because we don't want to waste too much memory on this. This one Riley had but I'm not using it for obvious reason, I made my own. Next, it will have a bullet behavior. You can see we have a bullet behavior. And on the left, you can see the settings. We need to remove bounds of solids, obviously, and we have to set angle. We don't need acceleration, speed is 400, and destroy outside of layout. The second object that we need is called raindrop splash which looks like this and it will be appearing after the bullet traveled certain distance so like a splash on the land in the water that's all we need now let's get a little bit into the coding part of it i want to run rain on the function because i don't want rain continuously like in riley's example it will get boring quickly so i will create a function called rain and then I can call it when I want to. Let's get to this function. It's over here. As always, feel free to post the video and then you can study the code more in detail because I'm not going to waste time reading all the code to you. So I create for our fort in the game, I create a timer, which will be random 30 to 60 seconds. And every 30 to 60 seconds, it will be calling the function rain basically next what we need rain sound obviously will start and what else we need we need to create object cloud which i already have that I had before so that's why i'm not repeating it but in case you missed my video this is something like this we create a cloud we set its scale the z, z that elevation we put it high because if we scroll it will create a nice parallax effect then we need a grayscale effect for the whole layout so i go to layouts and then our layout is called thunder in paradise 
If I click it on the left, I click effects. Here I can add effects exposure and grayscale. Grayscale will make everything gloomy and dark, kind of when rain goes with clouds. And exposure will make it very bright, something like this. When it's flashing, it will look like we have a thunder. I hope it's very easy to understand. Anyways, so we enable this grayscale and I don't want it to appear instantly. So I made this little delay so it appears gradually from 0 to 80. This is not a very effective way. You can write an expression to do it with a time parameter. But sometimes I don't want to waste time and even simple solutions do its job. So why bother? So that is what will happen during the rain. During this timer called rain, which is a random between 30 to 60 seconds, this will be the duration of the rain. I think I said incorrectly. It's not when it starts, it's a duration of the rain because it starts on function. And during this time is running and if FPS is high, so we don't want to overload low end computers here, we create every tick, which means we will create a lot of these drops and we create a raindrop. And where we want to create left of camera to right of camera from X to X plus 2000 of the camera position. So we cover whole screen, even if we scroll and rains will appear, raindrops will appear higher than camera. This is a minus here, which means we'll go higher on Y axis and, and between 500 to 2000 pixels. So raindrops don't appear on screen. They appear somewhere higher from the cloud. After raindrops are created, we need to destroy them after the certain distance is traveled. And we set it as self distance, which will be a random amount as well. So all drops have different distance they can travel. Basically, when raindrop is created, we set its scale randomly because we don't want them all to have identical size. We set Z elevation from 1 to 100, so they all not on one plate, but they spread it around. Then we set bullet angle, so they are not exactly the same angle, some variation here. And we set distance can go from 600 to 1500 pixels. So once this distance is traveled, will be creating a rain drop splash and then we destroy the raindrop. That's basically it. And finally for thunder, every 10 to 14 seconds, I mean between 10 to 14 seconds and while still rain is going, we'll be calling enabling effect exposure for our layout. We call the thunder sound, and we wait very small. We create lightning. I forgot to mention this one. Yes, we have also one more object, object called lightning, this one. So we create lightning, and then we disable exposure, then we again enable, so it's like flashing. And finally, we destroy the lightning and disable the exposure. So that's pretty much it. Let's see how it all looks together. Okay, I hope you hear the sound. See, it's gradually becoming darker and darker. And you see some drops appearing. And if we wait, see, and that's the thunder. I think it looks fantastic for an indie game. So hopefully this approach was helpful for you as well. Next, let's cover the snow. It looks like this. My snow map is not ready at the time of this recording, so I don't have much to show for it. But basically you can see snow is very nicely coming down on the map. With snow, I didn't reinvent the wheel, so I just give credit to Ali. It's another very helpful guy in Construct3 community. And you can see his tutorial on how to create snow. 
and basically even download this code that he created so you can create your snow then of course you can modify it improve that's what i'm going to do but there is not much to do around it because basically a snow is just a particle system and there is nothing to it there is nothing to code it's very simple so here on the left you see the uh, settings of this particle system hope you can see it here and as an object for this snow uh, it's using this one I'll change it later because now I just copied from Ali but obviously it's just a snowflake it's transparent background so snow is very easy and straightforward for snow we might create the function as well the same way like we did with rain so it's not always coming down but only when you call the function and then snow on created we set it animation frame to random and we also set the sign position to random and also we set on top of the layer so everything is on top of our game that's the snow the next we have water if we look closely you can see we have some little waves here i hope you can see that little raindrops coming and then you have this little movement so how we did it we create a special layer with just water you can see how it looks so basically this is our map but it just shows only water from this map because we want to affect this apply this effect only for snow i mean for only for water and then we apply effect called water to this object and here are the settings on the left and you can vary vary everything to make it stronger you can see settings that i use right now but let's put higher intensity for example just as example okay 0.3 for example so now it will be way too strong but just gives you an idea of what's changing it depends on the size of your map if map is really big then you have to have lower amount so see now what is moving much faster and maybe that's even better but now it's bringing too much attention on the water maybe it will be distract distraction from the game i don't know but you can see it's moving very nicely for the new game and the same way we can do lava so if you're doing a lava map then basically we need to change uh, water into the lava so this is exactly the same it's just water with what <laughs> this is the lava object with water effect applied to it and then you i position it over here all right i reduce the opacity and let's see how it goes okay if i go here this is without movement you see it's very static and boring and this one with movement it's not perfect because i need to make edges more transparent but basically it's moving like lava you can adjust settings and if far away it will look very nicely i don't need to move so quick so we can reduce the intensity for, for example to 0 0.5 and then what we can do is make the edges not so sharp like for example with the eraser and reduce hardness like this yeah oh that's too much probably it's just faster to do in photoshop i don't like to do to do this here in construct but basically uh, removing the hardness of the edges will give you the effect that you want to have and we reduce the frequency so it will move slower 
That's all for today. I hope you found my video helpful. We have a lot of progress done. We have now a space map, we have zombies map, we have soccer map, a lot of cool stuff in the game. So head over to Steam and get the demo of Nuke Them All or just Wishlist. It will really help me. Take care, guys. Cheers. Let's keep on going and developing our game. Whew.